welcome to a kind of an introduction slash playthrough slash expose of the components um, for Warfighter World War II Pacific. And this is from Danversing Games. This is kind of to go in companion with the full review that we did. Um, you can go and watch that video, that's already on YouTube. Um, we really like this game. It's a solitaire or co-op game. Um, but in that video, I, I didn't show the components because I wanted to do a bit more of a detailed walkthrough of this because it warrants a bit more of a look than just 10 minutes of playing around with it, okay? So I want to kind of show you what a mission would look like, what the pieces look like, and, and kind of how it plays. Um, so I've set up a, a little mission here. This is a very simple one um, with a very simple squad. I have no idea how this is going to go. I've not tested this squad, so it could go terribly, but that's half the fun of this game. Um, the first thing you can see is, is the board is kind of divided up into these columns. And it starts with column 1, and it goes on this side of the board all the way up to 11. Well, it's kind of hard to see there. There's a turn sequence here, which is very helpful. An attack sequence, which is a sub-sequence. And then there's a small attack chart. You don't really need this. Uh, there's basically f three different outcomes that is possible. You learn that very quickly. A small mission timer, and then a little setup um, aid. Again, once you've played a mission or two, you don't need the setup. It's very obvious what you do. Um, this is just an individual mission. Um, there are linked campaigns that you can make and rules to do that, which are going to do a single outing. Um, what you do is you either shuffle and draw randomly or you pick a mission to do. So today we just picked a short patrol just so we'd get an easier introductory one. And on here you basically you pick a mission and then it tells you your objective is five columns away so you have to travel five columns and then you get to your objective. And then there's a deck of objective cards and you just either pick one or again randomly choose. Um, and we picked out a sweep. So what we're going to do on our short patrol is we're going to move five spaces and then when we get here, we're going to do a sweep. And a sweep is, it says here, you have to be on this site, and you have to kill everyone that's on this site. And there'll be a number of enemies there, and if we don't kill them fast enough, reinforcements might arrive. So that might not be as easy as we think it is. But that's really what this game is. Um, at, at the heart of it, it's travel a number of spaces, killing guys on the way, and then get into an objective and do what it says. There is a ton of different objectives. I mean, there's objectives like you have to destroy kind of a, a complex. Well, you can't do that with rifles and pistols, so those you have to load up with satchel charges, with grenades, things like that. So you have to carry all this stuff along with you through the jungle and then kind of blow up all these buildings. Um, there's other ones where you might have to specifically, it's a, it's a hunt for a sniper. So there will be a sniper placed on the board at the beginning of the game and you have to go along and then you have to kill him, but you can't kill him until you kill everyone else. Usually they're screened, is what that's called. But all the while you're moving, this sniper is trying to pick you off and shoot halfway across the map. So things can get pretty bloody um, in some of these um, missions. There's also um, a bunch of expansions to this. One of my favorite of which, if I can find it here, is the, uh, is the shore invasions. We've played this a few times. As you can imagine, this is beach landings. It sets up a, a much more static um, board, but you have just like a ton of guns firing at you. You have to land in heavy fire and kill them all. It's just really fun. So there's a bunch of cool stuff with the missions and setting it up. And you set this up first, so you know what it is you have to do, and then you pick your squad. Well, don't make the mistake of picking your squad first and then finding out I'm terribly equipped. So you do, you get to tailor your squad for what you're trying to do. Here we're trying to go for kills, so I'm bringing along, um, this is the kind of main player character, Woodbury. Um, he's fairly new, he's got a cheap little points cost, and he's got a couple of extra abilities. He's got gung-ho, because he's a marine, he can move and do a free shoot basically. Uh, he's also got panic, because he's a very low level character, 11's very low. The numbers go up to like... Up, up into the high 20s, um, even 30s, I think, for some of the more experienced guys. Um, his health is 6, he can take 6 wounds, but that's also his hand limit as well. He's got a loadout of 9, so he can carry 9 points worth of equipment. 
Um, he's carrying four for camouflage, two for his carbine, and one for his machete. Uh, so four, five, six, seven, and then eight for a grenade. Um, the grenade cards on this guy, because that's just who he's with. So he's within his loadout limit, no big deal. We're going to bring along NPS Williams. NPS is non-player soldier. He has a set of equipment that's printed on his card um, and, a, and a number of actions. He, he's a fairly decent functioning um, character, but he doesn't have a hand of cards. So we have to help bring him along. And then we also have Squatty Martinez. He doesn't have any of these extra cards. It's all abstracted onto this very small roll of dice chart. Um, these two guys are, are different because one, two, three, four, five, six, our main player character has that health limit, which is a hand of cards. So he's going to be using cards to do things. Um, either to move, to shoot, to get extra actions. You have to discard cards to pay the entrance cost of a card. So to get into this, you have to have three movement. Well, this guy's got two inherent movement. He's got two. He's got three. So he has to discard a card and spend an action to move into this. He doesn't. He doesn't have to discard that extra card because he's got the three movement. But that's basically how that works. So we only have a limited number of cards, and we have to use them not only for him, but also for these guys in auxiliary fashion, okay? So that's what we're going to take a look at. I'm going to kind of play these um, face up here in a second, because what we'll do is we'll just kind of get cracking, and we'll go through the mechanics as we do it. So the first thing that we're gonna we're gonna do is we look. Each of our characters has two actions, um, and they have a one, two, and a three. That's just an identifier. You have one, two, three chits. You move them on that denotes where they are on the board. Okay. Looking at the hand of cards, we have draw fire, which says play before rolling a hostile's attack. Redirect the attack to another soldier in the same location. Mm, we might get there. We have walk it off. You may heal one or discard a suppress counter. This brackets any soldier, so Woodbury is holding these cards. If I want to use that effect on him, we have to spend an experience to do that. So there's some stipulations there. This is hand signals. All soldiers can freely exchange action cards. A soldier cannot end up with more action cards than he started with. If I had two player soldiers or I was playing co-op, this would be important. As it is, this is basically useless to us. To play this card, however, it would cost us two cards and then I could play it. So including this, that's three cards to do that. So again, stipulations on some of these cards. We have Camouflage, Covert 1. Again, costs one card to play this. Play when you, or spend an experience any soldier, declare an attack. Treat a screened target as being unscreened for the attack. So if there's an officer or a sniper basically hiding behind other um, hostiles and they have the keyword screened, you can ignore that. Normally you wouldn't be able to attack them. This enables you to bypass that. It's rule breaking. That's what all these cards do. And then we have a naval fire support card. This is very expensive to play but it is very, very good if you couldn't get it to go. You have to pay five experience to play this card, um, and you get to do a huge naval bombardment and attack a whole bunch of things. And the last card we have here is a location marker. And I believe this is different from the original Modern Warfighter, so I'm not sure, I haven't played that one, but this card just says, discard this card and draw a card from the location deck. Add the location card to your hand. So we're going to do this right off the bat, okay? We just discard this action card, and we draw from the location deck. And the location here is Light Jungle. You can see here it has an entrance cost of four, so it's expensive to get into. And it says it's free to play. Some cards you have to spend actions to play them. And it says Environ Fever 4 Plus, Nature Obstructed. So there's a lot of keywords here, um, and it's got some numbers down here as well that tell us how many bad guys there are. But basically in this game, one of the things you can do is play it almost right out of the box, and that's possible. Let me get these into, see if you can't see the glare on those a bit better. Um, 
This trifold that's double sided is literally a glossary of all the keywords. So if you don't know what something is, say this has the obstructed keyword. You just look it up on here and it'll tell you element of P obstructed. Attacks originating in a location on one side of the obstructed location cannot pass through the obstructed location to hit a target on the other side of the obstructed location. So, for example, if we put this here, and there were there were guys here, they couldn't shoot through the light jungle into this mission card, for example. That's effectively what that is. It's, it's a blocking terrain. Um, but all, the, the environ fever, the nature, all of those things um, have, play off of other card effects that will trigger keywords and things like that. So I think that might be the first thing that we actually do, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to play the light jungle. It's free to play this card, so I don't have to spend any of my actions to do it. And again, this hand of cards is with Woodbury, so it would be his actions that do that. As soon as we place this card, what we do is we consult this um, hostiles chart down here. And what it has is, is basically it's got a ranking, a sliding scale of the value of your squad tells you how many, um, how many bad guys come out. So what we're going to do is we have a squad points of around 45, and what we're going to do is we're gonna, um, so we're in this second row, so we're gonna pull two hostile cards. So we just pull one, and it says place in targeted, it's ambushes, and it says pay two experience or inflict one suppression on each soldier in this location. So, the first thing we're gonna do, it references targeted. We have a blind cup, which has a bunch of chits that say one, two, or three, and this tells us who the ambushes are going to attack. And it says here, number one. So, we place him targeted. This is the column which has the targeted number one guy in it. We place him right there. So we pay two experience or we inflict one suppression on each soldier in this location. That's not great, I'll be honest. We don't have any... We have one experience point with this guy, but we don't have two. So everyone is going to become suppressed. These are all soldiers. Well, that's just the first card. Remember, we had to draw two, so we pull a second one. And this says, it's a mortar team. And we're going to pull again another target. And this is also number one. Not great. <laughs> and this says it's screened by 0-1. So you can see he has a 4 value, he has a 2 value. If we had any guys in this column that were zeros or 1s, we would have to kill them first before we can target the mortar. You have to think the mortar's kind of behind the front lines. In this case, it's, it's, that's not the end of the world. And we place in the objective, okay? So we're going to put him all the way in the objective over here. He is immobile, so he can't move. And he has Penetration 1, which, that's a die roll modifier, we'll get there. And he has Indirect Fire. Now, if you remember, this is obstructed, so you can't shoot through it. His Indirect Fire means he can fire over the top of it. The Indirect Fire bypasses the obstructed keyword. Um, so, if we kind of look here, he has Attack Range 1, 2, or 3. Um, so, he, this is Range 0, so we can't attack anyone in this card. 1, 2, and 3. So he can't get us because we're in a short patrol. We're too far away from him to actually attack us at the moment. Um, but the attacks, they'll do their attacks later on. So at the, at the moment, we're in a little bit of a tight spot. So what we're going to do is Woodbury. Let's see. We're going to get our cards back here. Um, we're going to play the Walk It Off. You may heal one or discard a suppress counter. He's gonna discard his suppress counter. And why that's important is, is that if you have a suppress counter, the only thing you can do whilst you have it is spend an action to remove the suppress counter. And when you only have two actions, that is a real pain. So they, both Williams and Martinez are gonna do that. Woodbury can do it for free and maintain both his actions. So that's really good. 
this costs our card. Okay, the next thing to look at is trying to eliminate this guy. Um, and I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna have Martinez is gonna have a go at trying to shoot that ambusher. So we consult here his little card and he's got a little combat chart here. And this first column is, it says two underlined two nine seven. The, that underlined two and the one at the top, are his, there is health value. He's basically got two hit points. And whilst he has two hit points, he has two actions. He hits on a nine at range one and a seven at range zero. As soon as he takes a wound and goes down to one hit point, he has one action and hits on a 10 at range one and an eight at range zero. That's not very good. So he's basically gonna take a little pot shot with his last action. So we spend his second action to do that. And to do an attack, you roll a d10 and a d6. And on his little chart, we needed a seven or more on the d10. And this d6 we roll is to defeat cover. So if we look at the ambusher here, he has a three cover value. So I need a three on the d10, d6, and a 7 on the d10. Not necessarily the greatest odds, but that's a lot of what this game is. Oh, so we have an interesting situation here. So we rolled a 4, so we defeat his cover value, but to do an, a wound or a KIA, we would need to get a 7 or more on this. We didn't do that, so instead we simply suppress one of them, okay? If you look here, he's got three hit points, so to speak. He's got three members of his little team. We suppress one of them. And what this does, instead of rolling on the three chart, they're gonna roll on the two one chart, which is much worse for them. So that was a good thing that we did, um, but he's used all of his actions. Now Williams thinks, hmm, well, what I might do is I might attack as well. The problem with Williams is, is that he has a scoped sniper rifle effectively. So at range zero, he's at range zero, he, he has to roll a nine to hit. At range two, one two, he needs a seven to hit. So he's better at long range than he is at close range. He does have a grenade, which he thinks, hmm, that might be an interesting um, thing to do here. Um, but I think what we're gonna do instead is we're going to use Woodbury to do an attack. I don't want to waste the grenades quite yet. So Woodbury's going to give it a shot. He's again at range zero. And so he's got his M1 carbine, which hits it on a six at range zero. So we're going to give that a go. Oh, that's just terrible. Okay, so here's an instance where we didn't defeat their cover and we didn't hit so we literally do nothing. If one of these is a successful roll, either meeting the to hit roll or defeating the cover, you do a suppress. If they both hit, you do a KIA. So that was a terrible waste of an action because we didn't do anything there. That's not great, I'll be honest. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to, um, well, we're gonna have to Yikes. We're gonna have to probably throw a grenade here, I think. <laughs> the grenades are fun, I will say that. Um, so we're gonna use, Woodbury's gonna throw his grenade. So he's gonna throw his little grenade marker, and if we look at this little grenade chart here, he has, it is an explosion. Um, it says explosion four, which means we're gonna roll four dice. Very powerful. We, um, and we're gonna, he has penetration one as well. So that's good. That helps us to defeat cover more easily. It's plus one to our d6. So we're gonna roll these dice. Fantastic. So this is an example of an excellent roll. So we needed a seven or more to hit, and we needed effectively a two plus one penetration to defeat cover. So we did defeat at the cover and we did four successful KIAs. So we basically eliminate him entirely and he is dead. So he goes to our little dead pile. Now, 
that little two in the top right hand corner that also serves as the number of experience points that we get. So that was good news. It was costly in the sense that we had to use up our sweet, sweet grenade, but we killed him and got some good experience out of it. This little one marker that was on him just goes back in the cup. So he shot with his rifle and missed. He used up his grenade. He shot with his Nope, he's suppressed. Okay, so he's got one more action, and what he's gonna do is he's gonna actually move in um, to this space here, just to help us get on our way. So he spends his last action, and he's number two, so he's gonna move in. Now, to move into here, um, it requires four movement, and he only has two. So we're going to discard a couple of cards here. We're going to discard this card, because it wasn't very good, and frankly, oof, that's rough stuff. I think we're going to get rid of the naval gunfire support, because I don't think we're going to need that. So I spend those two cards for him to move in there. Now Woodbury has only got two cards left, and that's not great. Uh, but we'll kind of get there in a second of how we can spend an action on our next turn to refill our hand. So that's basically the end of the soldier turn, or the player turn. If you look over here, that's we did all that. So then we get to the hostile turn. Um, oh, before we do that, it says at the start of the first soldier turn, recon one location. Oops, we didn't do that. Okay, so we're just going to pick up the native garden and have that in our hand. Uh, that's fine. That would have been a bit easier. Okay, so we'll keep that in our hand. I forgot to do that. It's kind of like your pre-mission recon. You get a free card, basically. So on the hostile turn, they're going to do what's called a reinforcement draw. And what you do is you look at all of the location cards or the objective. They have this reinforcement value on them. Now this is inactive, so we're not going to pull that. You only pull on ones that have a reinforcement value and you have a guy on them. Unless it says otherwise. So if you look at this location over here that we just pulled, it says always draw from reinforcements. That's a rule breaker. Um, if you don't have anyone on there, guys are still running into there and, and attacking you basically from the rear. Normally you only pull where you have guys. So we're gonna pull, a, you only pull one card and we're looking to match it against this 0-1 range. So we're going to pull a card, and this has a 2 value. Falls outside of the 0-1 range, so we just discard it. That means no reinforcements popped up, basically. That's very good for us. And then we go to the attack phase. There's only one mortar team on the board. He's targeting number 1, and he's out of range, so he doesn't do any attacks. We then go to the close range. Normally, if you can't attack your target, you move towards your target. Remember, he's immobile, so he's not going to move. Then we remove suppress counters. If there were any enemies that had suppress counters on them, you would remove one from each card. And then you advance the mission timer, so we go down to 10. And then you do it all over again. So currently, we're, we're sitting, uh, we have very few cards, we really need some more cards to be able to move up effectively because of this pretty high entrance cost. So what we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to refresh all of the actions that we have. And then we're going to draw cards. That costs Woodbury an action. One, two, three, four. So he's got four action cards here. And we had those two already. We pulled a steady aim. Play when you declare a ranged attack, add two, or spend an experience to add four to your attack rolls. Very, very good. We have a flanking attack. Um, you may perform a move, then you may immediately perform an attack without spending actions. That's very, very good. Play when you are paying an entrance cost, add three to your movement value. This is very, very good, and we're going to use that right now. And then we have move out. 
You can perform a move without spending an action. Also very, very good. So... There's a couple of things that we're going to do, and we're going to, this, we're going to talk about how we use all these cards in connection with each other. So I think the first thing that we're going to do... Yikes. Is we're going to play... Nope. We're not going to do that yet. Okay. I was thinking about playing that card, I'm not going to do that yet. So, we are going to... Um, we're going to move out. So we can... Uh, risky business. Nope. Okay, <laughs> I've decided against it. So the first thing we're going to do, and you can only do this once per turn, so you can't Blitzkrieg the board. We're going to play the Native Garden. It costs one action to play. Oh, yikes, it costs an action to play. That's fine. We're going we're gonna to do it. Who cares? It costs one action to play. That's all of our actions used up for Woodbury. So we're going to try and eke some extra bits and pieces out of this. So when we play this, um, ooh, before, before we play this, we will play this, before we play this, then we have this Environ Fever 4 Plus roll. And that's really important. It's very important to remember, and it's very easy to forget these kind of things. It's very easy to forget them. So you kind of look up, oh, what was that thing? Um, the environ, let's see, where we got the element in. Okay, a keyword appearing on extremely inhospitable location cards. Soldiers may suffer harm when in these locations. Um, blah, 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 blah. To avoid suffering harm, you must roll the indicated number or higher. So basically, I'm in the jungle, I'm gonna get jungle fever unless I roll a four or more. So we're gonna roll the dice, I roll the five, that's greater than four, so I don't get sick. That's great. Normally, if you fail that roll, you get suppressed. It's really how that plays out mechanically. But that's very, very good for us that that didn't happen. Um, so that's something you also want to pay attention to. When you start getting the really dense jungles, those fever rolls get to like eight. <laughs> it's, you just, you get sick going through it. It's very bad. And it slows you down. So we can play this, and in doing so, we're going to have to pull a bunch of hostile cards. So. We're going to pull the first one, which is a Rifleman. Nothing special here, rules-wise. He's just going to sit here and he's got he's going to attack number three, if and when he can. We're going to pull the second guy, and it's an Officer. Yeah, this is bad. He has Fearless and he has Inspire. He's going to attack number three as well. And then the last one is a Machine Gun Team. Yikes. Things got really hairy real quick. And he's going to get attack number one. So here's some uh, interplay uh, that's very, very important. So we have these screened values, okay? So both of these cards, he's screened by zero through one. He's screened by one through two. This guy's a one, which means to kill either of these two, I have to kill this guy first. There's no way to do that, just kind of, that's the setup of their little machine gun nest, basically. The rifleman's in front, machine gun team's kind of behind. We have to get through this guy. Unless we had that camouflage card, which I think I, oh, I still have it. This bypasses uh, and makes them unscreened, so I could pick off one of these guys if I needed to. Why that's difficult is because, um, well, it's actually not that hard, and we're going to probably end up doing that. Um, the machine gun team, he's got a range of 0 through 2, so he can attack at range of 0, 1, or 2, but the obstructed nature of this jungle means he can't shoot our guys on this mission card. So again, always paying attention to these um, keywords, very, very important. Um, this guy, the officer, has Fearless, and he has Inspire, so his Fearless means a hostile card with the fearless keyword is not affected by suppress results. He can't be suppressed. You gotta kill him or the shot bounces off of him basically. And he also has inspire, which I think remove one suppression counter from each hostile in play at the start of the hostile attack step. Basically they're gonna remove two each turn, but that one is before they attack, so they'll do better attacks if you only suppress them. So the officers are really bad. He has a reinforced 0-2, so 
So more guys are going to come out. We really need to kill that guy. Um, that's kind of pressing number one, I think. So having put these guys out, yes, this is where they sit. Okay. So the, I think Mr. Williams, he's going to take a pot shot at the, at the officer, I think. Oh, that's really expensive. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I'm going to do that. We might hold off on that. Oh, gosh. So, the first thing we're going to do, you may perform a move without spending an action. What we're going to do... Uh, He's gonna, we're gonna move him for free using that move out card. And that's number one. He has a movement of two. What we're gonna do is we're gonna play that, this advance card. When you are paying the entrance cost, add three to your movement value. So we have a five movement value, five's more than four. He can move in, okay? That's great. We're starting to blow through our cards again here. Now when he moved, if there was any enemies here, he could attack for free, but there aren't. That would, that's provided by his gung-ho ability. So what he's going to do is he's going to move in again. So that's called a... F okay, we're going to do it. You may perform a move, then you may immediately perform an attack without spending actions. We're definitely, definitely going to do that. Now, this is a covert card. It says Covert 2. So I have to ditch both of these to do that. So we're using up all our cards. This is very, very expensive. But again, it's a way to get its free actions. So we're going to do it. We can move in here because the entrance cost is zero. It's very easy to get in. And then he gets his free attack from that card. So we're going to shoot the rifleman. And we roll 1d6 and 1d10. We really, really need to get a hit here. And we do. That's excellent. So we do one hit. And because we beat that six we needed and the one we needed, because he's not got good cover, we do an EKIA. So we, it was a kill, not a suppress. So that was good. And when you enter a location with a hostile, perform an attack without spending an action. Our gung-ho enables us to get another free attack, so we're going to do that as well. He's going to shoot that rifleman once again. Uh, this time we do not succeed in attacking, and that's very unfortunate. Um, so he gets a suppress marker, which in this instance, not going to do all that much. Um, I think what we're going to then do is we're going to have Mr. Williams is going to take a pot shot at this rifleman spending an action. And he's at distance one, he's an eight to hit. He has penetration one. Nope, so that's a, he misses, but he overcomes this value, so he's going to do another suppress. Now at this point, he's got three guys in the team. One, two, three. You can't add more suppressions or more EKAs that, that, are, that are present on the card. So at the moment, we've kind of got this card maxed out for suppressions. Uh, because one of them's dead and the two remaining are suppressed. We can do kills to it, um, but suppressions aren't going to help us anymore. But I think we're going to give it a good go anyway. So he's going to take another shot. And he's going to try and, he's going to try and shoot him one more time. Perfect. So, perfect roll. We just turn one of these suppressions into an EKIA. And that's Williams all used up. And Martinez is lagging behind. Um, but he doesn't have the he doesn't have the movement value to be able to get up. We will force him to, I think. So he's gonna move up. That costs an action. So this is a move, an entrance value of four. He's got a three. We ditch our last card to make that into a four so he can get in properly. And then he's gonna use his last action to take a ranged attack. He needs a nine to hit, he's not very good. But it's a pot shot of that rifleman, hopefully we can get him. 
Nope, we don't get him. And we can't add another suppress because again, he's kind of maxed out on those. So it looks like that's the end of what we're doing. We don't have any cards left, we don't have any actions left. Um, so then we go to the hostile turn. Now on the hostile turn, this inspire means before the attack step, uh, we're gonna remove this suppression marker. Before we do that, we're gonna draw reinforcements. So we're gonna draw one reinforcement card here, and we're looking at this zero through one value again. And it's a one. So this guy does pop out, and he's gonna sit right here in the light jungle, and he's gonna attack number one as best he can. And then this has the word event. So we get to pull an event card. Surprise! Immediately perform an attack for a random hostile in play that is in range to attack. The hostile also attacks as normal this turn. This is very bad. This is one of the bad events. One, two, three, four, five, and we'll do re-rolls on the six. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so the machine gun team is gonna make an attack on, um, on Woodbury just as a free attack as part of this event that comes out. So he's gonna roll his dice. Again, he's gonna roll a d10 and a d6, and he's rolling on this three chart. So he rolls the dice. Okay, so the three it's less than a six, so he misses this part of the attack, but we defeat the cover value. Woodbury's only got a cover of value of two. So the five exceeds that, so Woodbury's gonna become suppressed. So on his turn, he's gotta he's got get rid of that. So that's the event done with. Some events are good, some are very bad. Um, so that was the event, that was that reinforcement pull. Now we're gonna do the reinforcement pull for the native garden. And we were looking through for a zero through one. This is a three, doesn't do anything. And then we pull one for the officer who has his own reinforced value. Was trying to get rid of him, couldn't do it. And we pull flankers. So zero, his reinforce is zero dash two. This is a two. So we're gonna place this in rearmost. That's what it says. And it says, soldiers cannot leave this location. Number one. The good news is, um, is that we don't have anyone here. Basically, the flankers would pin you from moving from that spot. So we've gotten lucky that we moved everyone out of there. Um, so that was good. Now what's going to happen is this inspire ability removes the suppression marker, and then they all do their attacks. And this is where we get into some pretty hot mess. So we'll start over here. The flankers have a range of zero through one. Zero and one. They're targeting number one over here. He's out of range, so he doesn't attack. The rifleman has a range of zero through one, zero, one, and he's attacking number one, so he's going to make an attack. He's going to roll a d6 and a d10, and he's rolling on this three chart down here because he's not been suppressed or ka eight at all. And we rolled really well. Um, so, he's attacking number one, Woodbury's gonna take a wound. Not what you wanna see. So now we get over to this rifleman. He's trying to attack number three in this jungle. Um, that's as far as his range goes. Um, but because he's got two dead guys on this card, he's rolling on this little one chart. So he, need, he needs a 10 to hit, basically. And this is a fantastic roll. So, um, he needed a 10 to hit, so he misses, and he also rolled a 1, so he didn't even penetrate um, our cover, so he totally missed his shot. That was the, the best possible roll for us as a play. Totally guffed it. We don't have any um, results there. Doesn't suppress us, doesn't do anything. We go up to the officer. Um, yikes, he's very good. Um, he's going to roll... He's trying to attack number three. Okay, so he's not gonna do anything. He only has a range of zero. It's got a little pistol, you have to imagine that. Um, he's only gonna attack at range zero. His target's at range one, so he's not gonna attack. And then the machine gun team, the machine gun team is gonna target number one right here, and he's gonna try and blow Woodbury away. And does so successfully. So this is an eight. Yikes. 
So he defeats our cover. Whoops. No, that's fine. Okay. And uh, he does eight. And seven through nine does two wounds to us. This is very, very bad. This is where we start to get into some real trouble now. So we've got three wounds. He's half dead, which means when he pulls cards, he's only gonna draw three cards now. And you've seen how valuable the cards were to get us to do things. Um, so this is why you might wanna, when you're picking a team, pick two player soldiers. <laughs> the toss up with that is, is for player soldiers, you have to pay for all this gear. So it costs more to use those guys and deck them out. NPS Williams, He's got all this extra gear, but it's inherently built into his card. You don't pay for this extra stuff, he's just nine. But he doesn't have those cards, and those cards are really important. And that's also why this is a really funny co-op game, because uh, if you've got two players, you've got two hands of cards, you're exchanging cards, playing cards for each other, spending the experience points to trigger it for other people, you get some really cool interplay that way. Um, right now, this is looking very hairy. I'm gonna tell you that right now. So, he attacked, um, he attacked, okay, and the rifleman attacked, so, the flankers, because they didn't attack, they're gonna close range, so they just move one space, and that they don't attack, he's trying to get closer to number one, and the officer, same dealio, he's trying to get number three, so he's gonna move over here, so that next turn he can attack number three. And this is a little bit of where you get into the solo AI. It's very simple. You can kind of game it. So number three is going to move in here. Or well, Mr. Officer is going to be out of range again. So he's going to have to move to attack. But, as you've seen, the power of the officer is not in attacking. His power is um, by healing the suppressions off of other people and by pulling out more reinforcements. He just brings more guys to the battlefield. And it's really imperative that you get those guys off. Um, but, but that's um, the soldier turn. They would all remove a suppression counter if they had one. They don't have any, uh, unfortunately for us. And then you move the timer down. Once the timer runs out and you haven't met your objective, you lose the game. Um, if everyone dies, you lose the game. <laughs> and that's probably quite likely to happen here. So uh, we're going to flip everyone's actions back over. And then we're going to have a really... Uh, fun time rolling our um, fever rolls. So um, we've got Williams, he's gonna roll, he needs a four or more, and he gets it. Martinez, four or more, and he gets it. And then Woodbury needs a four or more, and he gets it. So they all survive the environment fever rolls, so no one has to get an extra suppression. Now, uh, Woodbury has to remove his suppression marker before he can do anything else. That's not ideal. Um, he's also wounded, which is also very bad. Oh my gosh, I've been such a fool. It, he has the camouflage and I haven't been using it. And, and that's the one thing with this game is you have to really pay attention to what you're doing. Talking on camera and trying to do it, I'm like missing things. But the camouflage, let's say, he got attacked twice. So, the first one and the second one. Okay. I wouldn't have made either of those rolls, so I'm not that worried about it anyway. Um, basically, the camouflage, if you roll an eight or more, they don't attack. Um, so. All right, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? I feel we, we've gotta get cards. I think we really do. So we're gonna pull three cards and we're hoping that, good gracious, that's his second action. Hoping we get something good that gives us some free attacks here. Oh, of course. Play when you declare hand-to-hand -hand attack. Not doing any of that. Play after you roll for a hostile card's attack. Discard an ammo, so suppress them. Oh, that's good. Play when you are paying a structure location's entrance cost. Ignore the entrance cost penalties on hostile cards. We don't have any structure cards. Some of the locations are like, it's a HQ building, or it's a hut, or it's a... You know, barracks. That's a keyword again. So, we're going to keep this suppress card handy. That's for sure. Alright, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? we got to get to some killing here, I think. So, Williams is going to... 
This is bad. <laughs> this is real bad. Um, screen by 0 1. Okay. Williams is going to throw a grenade at the rifleman. Because we're going to try and kill the rifleman so he's unscreened and then we can try and kill him. That's what we're going to try and do. I think it's imperative that we do that. So he's going to spend his grenade marker. We throw it at those riflemen here. Come on. And I've rolled fairly decently here. Um, it's not ideal. So we do two KIAs and a suppression. Yikes. Okay. We can get rid of our little grenade card because we don't need that anymore. Um, I was hoping we could wipe that card. Not ideal. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have Martinez take a pot shot at the rifleman to try and finish them off. He needs a 7 to hit. Come on, 7. We do not do it. He's going to go again. Come on. 7 to hit. Nope. So that's all of his actions done. Yikes. Um, well, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to have Williams is going to take a shot at plus two. So we're going to spend this. He, <laughs> he needs a nine to hit the rifleman because he's... Nope, we miss horribly. So that was an absolute disaster of a turn, if I'm honest with myself. So, we... <laughs> that was okay, but I was hoping to polish him off and get rid of that officer. So what's going to happen now, is that's basically the end of our turn, there's nothing else to be done about it. Um, we do the hostile reinforcement draw. And we pull 0-1 for the light jungle, and this is a 0, so there's a lone soldier that pops up. And he's going to attack number two. I'm kind of running out of space here. So I'm going to put him just here. They're all in the same spot. Then the native garden. We're looking for 0-1. This is a two. Not part of this range, so nothing happens here. But then the officer's got his own pull. And he pulls a two, which is reinforced as 0-2. So an NCO shows up. <laughs> this is really bad. Ooh. And he's going to take number three. So we're starting to get very, very much overloaded and overwhelmed at this point. Um, at the beginning of the hostile attack phase, the Inspire ability removes the Suppression Marker. And they're basically all going to kind of blow us away here. Um, so what we'll do, we'll start with the Mortar Team. <laughs> Who's going to attack? It's going to attack him. He probably should have done it last time. I probably forgot to do that. Uh, so he's going to roll a d10 and a d6. And he's going to suppress us. This three is a miss on this little chart. But he's going to add a suppression marker because he defeated our cover. So Woodbury is <laughs> suppressed once again. Um, we'll go with the rifleman here. Uh, they're going to attack... Uh, they're going to attack Martinez in the jungle. Which they do not do. They This defeats his cover, so he'll get suppressed. But this six, they're wrong on the one chart. They needed a ten to hit, basically, because two of them are dead. Um, the machine gun team is going to open fire on Woodbury. And this is where we're going to... At the start of the hostile's attack step, roll for each hostile targeting you. If you roll an 8, so I'm going to roll an 8 for that mortar team. Good. So that means we're going to remove the suppression marker. The mortar team couldn't see us. We're going to roll again for the machine gun team. Nope. So the machine gun team is going to open fire. And the machine gun team is going to miss, but add one suppression marker. So, same effect basically. Um, then we have, gosh, this is uncanny. Um, the riflemen are going to attack, so I'm going to roll a, roll my camouflage roll. Nope. So they're going to attack. I need a 10 to hit. That's a miss, but they'll add a suppression. Um, 
play after you roll for a hostile card's attack. Discard one ammo from a weapon or one expendable that can attack the hostile, cancel the attack. So I'm going to spend an ammo from his gun. He's abstractly fighting back, so it's a gunfight. So he, so that guy, we canceled that attack, so he didn't do the suppression to us. Great. Um, then the last things we have here, so we have the flankers. They're going to attack Woodbury. And they need a... <sighs> Yikes. Two and a seven. So that's going to cause a wound to us. And of course I didn't bring a first aid kit because I'm a moron. Um, <laughs> the officer's going to attack um, Martinez. He needs a five to hit. Yep. Oh no. Oh no, this is a disaster. Poor, poor Martinez. So Martinez has a four cover value, which this meets. <laughs> and this is a 10, and a 10 is an outright kill from the officer. The officer literally runs up to him with his pistol and his katana and just like guts Martinez. It's real sad. So uh, he's downed. He's... And then what happens is, is uh, Mr. Woodbury's got the panic ability, and whenever someone's downed, he gets suppressed because he hits the deck basically. <laughs> it's all awful. Uh, then we have the NCO. He's going to attack Martinez. No need. So we're going to get rid of these. Okay. So we're going to redraw for the NCO. That's a three. That's a two. So the NCO is going to attack um, Williams. Because Williams is the only guy left there. Oh my gosh. And he does... Ugh, this is awful. He does two wounds to Williams. Williams only has two hit points. So Williams is downed. That's, this is terrible time. And that triggers the panic again. Uh, suffer suppress each time a soldier is down. So he's down again. Um, and then you've got this lone soldier who, he's not attacking number two anymore. Because number two is dead, gone. Well, it's just, it's a one. That's, that's the only person that's left. Who cares? So he's got a one on him. The lone soldier. Um, we have to picture he's, I know I've got him over there. Oh, I didn't do his event. Permanently reduce the entrance cost of this location by two. And he was pulled into the light jungle. So that's basically meaningless at this point. Because I don't have anyone in there. I mean, we're all going to be dead anyway. So the lone soldier's going to take a part shot. And he's got penetration one. He's taking a shot at Woodbury. Oh my gosh, you cannot be serious. <laughs> my rolls. This is a 10, which is a wound. So this guy, he's now gone. Oh no. I got five wounds out of six. Um, and then it will be, move the timer down, remove suppression markers. None of them have any. And this is the point of the game where you concede because I've got two actions left. I can remove two of my suppression markers, and then I literally can't do anything else because I don't have any cards, basically. Um, so that's the end of the game. I got absolutely swarmed. Um, this is why, and you're playing with experience, there's a ton of cool stuff in this game for you to, for you to mess around with. The one thing I'll show you is all of these cool um, skills, okay? So, you can purchase these skills, and the skills are really powerful. Add one to your ranged attack defeat cover rolls. Each d6 you have is plus one. You can make one of your guys a sergeant, which means he, get, he starts with two experience, and he starts with a bonus two KN, which are knowledge cards, basically. And you can freely remove one suppression from any soldier at the start of each turn. It means Woodbury could get rid of his other one, right? The stipulation here is, you have to have a printed value of 14 for their purchase cost. Well, he's only 11, so he can never become a sergeant, basically. Um, but there's a ton of these things. Add one to the movement value of all soldiers, right? So all of these guys would spend fewer cards moving through the terrain. This guy's a corpsman. Add to your heal rolls. If you have a medic, they'll probably be a corpsman. Give them a first aid kit. They could heal these wounds and get you back on your feet. Um, focus. When you declare an attack, spend one experience to ignore screening restrictions. We saw that in kind of those um, 
those camouflage ones, the covert ones. Marksman, add one to ranged attack rolls. Uh, veteran, can only be purchased for a player soldier with a printed cost of 20 or higher. Gain one extra action each soldier turn and start with two XP. So instead of having two actions, you got three. And you start with two experience. Very, very powerful stuff. Um, the, the lieutenant starts with four experience, four knowledge cards, select a soldier each turn to gain an extra action. Be more picky about that. It, these are very expensive, and in the campaigns that you play, if you do linked missions and stuff, you know, you there's rules about gaining points to gain skills and who can grow and what. But this is the basic gist of the game. If you can make it to your objective, you've got to defeat everyone who's on this card, right? And then you win the game. Um, some missions are easier than others. Some missions are very difficult. You get an unlucky pull where you pull an officer earlier on in the game. You've got to kill him quick. Hopefully he's not screened. Otherwise things get really shady really quickly. Uh, there's also a whole slew of um, item cards which help you to deck your, deck your squad out in a more maybe appropriate way. Um, so there's cards like various different machine guns with tripods and when you have a machine gun with a tripod you can roll multiple dice and if they all hit you can do three hits to someone whereas normally you know if, if you don't have the spray keyword you would roll this and as long as one hits you do one hit you can activate kind of a really get them yeah, there's just a ton of cool stuff with this game huge customize customization available i mean there's even uh, I have a, a, an Undead Zombies expansion, just for fun, right? You can take this game as seriously or not as you want. I've got fortifications. There's literally like an arm, um, like a, a complex that you go inside of through these locations. You bring in Bangalores and satchel charges, blowing the stuff up. Really, really fun. You can make this game whatever you want to. So this is the, this is the Pacific version. The terrain is killer, that's a big part of it. And a lot of it is the flavor in these keywords, like the inspire and the fearless. Man, it, you can't suppress these guys, you have to kill them. It's very, very Japanese, Banzai Charge-y, things like that. And, and I, there's, you know, some of these cards are, like, it's a Banzai Charge, right? He's fearless, he targets the closest, he just rolls and kills. Um, there's, there was one, the ca as a kamikaze guy. He runs up and he just, he's holding a bunch of grenades and blows himself up. He might kill you or he might just kill himself. Either way, um, you, you do get some of that kind of Pacific flavor in it. Uh, I, I have a blast playing this as you can tell. Hopefully this was at least somewhat insightful and instructional. Watch the review if you want to get Minor Grant's opinions in a bit more depth. Uh, but this is a really fun and really enjoy this. So appreciate you guys tuning in. And I've been Alexander from theplayersape.com.